Hello everyone. Today I invite you to a story about one of the bravest heroes of the World War II. A volunteer who went on a secret mission to invade the secret and destroy the Auschwitz. My name is Radosa Dolinsky and if you like historical storytelling, about, especially about the World War II and the history of Poland in the times of the communist regime, please subscribe to this channel. Before we start this story, we need to understand the background of the cavalry captain Witold Pilecki, the hero who volunteered for Auschwitz. Because to understand this person, we need to see on his deep devotion, his Christian faith, and his constant self-development, and I would say like a inner spiritual work with uh, on his on his character. This is something very uncommon for our times. Because even in times where we start self-development, no matter if it's uh, psychotherapy, if it's uh, a religious uh, search for uh, higher values, or meditation, spiritualism, we mostly focus to uh, get our lives better for ourselves, to have a great family, a personal success, uh, to live maybe in a bigger harmony with the world and uh, other people. But the cavalry captain, Witold Pilecki, was devoted for the good, for sacrificing himself for a greater good of the uh, community. A position in behavior that comes from the book Imitation of Christ by Thomas A. Kempen, a Christian philosopher from the uh, 14th century, that was like a guide for Witold Pilecki. Witold Pilecki, who uh, is, was coming from a patriotic uh, Polish family, who lived uh, in the Russian Empire. Because you may not know that uh, in the 19th century there was no Poland. Poland was divided uh, between Germany, Austria and Russia. And uh, the grandfather of Witold Pilecki fought against the uh, Russian Empire in the so-called January Uprising in the year of 1863. And after the uprising he was convicted, lost all his property and was sent to Far East. And that's why Witold Pilecki was born in Far Karelia. This is a area far north on the border between nowadays Russia and Finland. In the year of 1901, when he was uh, eight, uh, at the age of nine, his family decided to go back to Polish lands to grow their kids uh, within the Polish culture. And they settled in the area of Vilno. Nowadays, Vilno is the capital of Lithuania, where the young Witold Pilecki was a scout and soon he took part in the war for Polish independence from the end of 1980 until 1920. The first combat of volunteer soldier Pilecki was on the New Year's Eve of 1990, where he took part in the fight for liberating Vilnius from the Germans, who at that time were occupying this region. Soon afterwards, the Polish forces have to abandon Vilnius after an invasion by the Soviets. Soon Pilecki was uh, fighting in a mobile cavalry unit led by the legendary 
Jerzy Dąbrowski, Łukaszka, was fighting like a partisan unit in the woods and countryside of the Vilnius region. In 1990, Poland took back Vilnius, but the fight didn't end. In the spring of 1920, the Soviets attacked again, and Witold Pilecki enlisted again in a cavalry unit and took part in the famous Battle of Warsaw in 1920. Later on, where the area around Vilnius was claimed by the new Lithuanian Republic, he took part in the so-called Żeligowski Rebel. When Polish soldiers of the Polish army, who were inhabitants of Vilnius, rebelled and took the city by force from Lithuanian hands. Thanks to direction, Vilnius and the area around it became part of Poland, but it created a hard relationship with Lithuania for the next almost 20 years. So young Witold Pilecki, as a teenager, from his 17th year until 1921, was a fighter for in the independence of Poland. After the war, Witold Pilecki tried to study arts at the University of Vilnius, but soon uh, he had to break his studies because after the death of his father, he inherited the settlement of uh, the uh, Pileckis in the, I know it's very hard to pronounce in the uh, village of Sukurce near Lida, a beautiful uh, place and uh, nowadays it's uh, Belarus. And there in 1926, he started his, uh, you can say, career and life as a Polish landlord. He was not only uh, caring about himself and his property, but also he was very engaged in the uh, local society. He founded the local firefighters, and after he finished uh, um, stu um, his studies in agriculture management, he also started to share his knowledge with uh, his neighbors and, uh, you can say, all the locals. In 1929, he met his future wife, Maria Ostrowska, and it took him almost two years to uh, get her hand. And uh, it wasn't a love from the first sight. He really had to uh, give a lot of himself uh, to encourage the young Maria to marry him. There's even a famous uh, anecdote uh, coming from a book written by the son of uh, Witold Pilecki about a rivalry between uh, Witold Pilecki and uh, a pilot of a military man from a nearby town for the hand of uh, the beautiful young Maria. Once uh, and uh, this rival, he was uh, driving to meet Maria with the bicycle. Uh, it was like a distance of five kilometers. And one day, Witold managed to organize that somebody took this bicycle and brought it back to the home of the pilot. So uh, in bad weather conditions, he had to walk for five kilometers. That's close to three and a little bit more than three miles. And uh, after that, the rival resigned from <laughs> the rivalry for the hand of uh, the beautiful Maria. And finally, in 1931, they have married. And altogether, the 30s were uh, a great time for them. A great family time in which uh, where Vitold Maria had uh, two children. Uh, first the older Andrzej, then uh, the girl Sofia. But this uh, idyllic family time ended in 1939, because uh, on the 26th of August, uh, Witold was mobilized into the Polish cavalry, into the Polish army, and maybe, as many of you already know, on the 1st of September, we have been attacked by the Germans, and on the 17th of September, from the back, by the Soviets. And it was the end of Poland which was then under the occupation of uh, the Germans and Soviets. Witold Pilecki fought bravely. Mm, his uh, cavalry unit destroyed seven tanks, 
shot down through two German airplanes and he continued to fight until October and he never surrendered. At some point uh, he disbanded together with, the, uh, with Jan Wodarkiewicz, another officer, their unit, and they agreed to uh, meet in Warsaw and start underground operations against the German occupation. In the same time, it was also a hard trial for his wife, Maria, because together with the two small children, they were the age of uh, seven and six, they had to escape from the Soviets. Because already the end of 1939, the Soviets started an operation against Polish intelligence, against, uh, let's say, the elite of the Polish population on the occupied territories. They were taking people and forcing them to go to far Siberia, putting them in labor camps. And until the outbreak of the war between the Germans and the Soviets in spring 1941, they've taken more than one million Polish people. And thanks to help of neighbors, Maria did escape with the small children. And after a couple of months of uh, wandering, wandering and hiding from the Soviets and their secret police and KVD, in March 1940, they made it through the Soviet-German border on the occupied Polish lands and settled in a safe haven at uh, Maria's parents in a town called Ostrovia Mazowiecka. And thanks to that, Witold could start his operations fully and he engaged in the underground movement called Polish Secret Army, in Polish Tajna Armia Polska. But then came the summer of 1940, where the Germans started another brutal repression against the Polish population with the opening of the Auschwitz concentration camps. The goal of the Germans was to transform the Polish population into a nation of slaves. First, they undertook an action called AB, in which more than 40,000 people from the elites of Poland, lawyers, engineers, sportsmen, were killed by German occupying forces. Then, after the news of the mass killings reached the Western community, they decided to open a concentration camp, which was supposed to maintain in a brutal killing regime not only the elites of Poland, but all those who were opposing the German occupation. And the first transport of Polish people to the newly founded concentration camp called Auschwitz, near the town of Oświęcim, who was uh, at that time part of the German Reich, was organized on the 14th of June 1940. Soon some important members of the Polish secret army were arrested and taken to this camp. Jan Wodarkiewicz, the leader of the Polish secret army, on talks with General Rowetzki, the leader of the main underground force who would later become the home army, have decided that they need a volunteer, an officer, who will go vol voluntarily to Auschwitz to check what is, happen what is happening and possibly organize an underground resistance in the camp. Jan Wodarkiewicz proposed that this brave officer could be Witold Pilecki. After this proposal from the leader of the Polish secret army, Witold Pilecki decided to go to Auschwitz as a volunteer. And on the 19th of September, in a moment when uh, Wapanka started in the area of Warsaw where he uh, lived, Wapanka was something like uh, Germans entering a quarter of a town, taking uh, every adult male captive, then leaving only those who were like crucial for the uh, German war effort, like uh, important factory workers or uh, uh, workers of the administration, of the German administration. The others were taken to uh, 
prisons and some of them to the uh, concentration camp in Auschwitz. And together with more than 500 uh, Polish men from Warsaw, Witold Pilecki arrived on the 21st of September at Auschwitz concentration camp. On the moment of his arrival, he was beaten by the SS soldiers and he lost already two teeth. And soon after entering the camp, in a couple of days, he understand why there is this big inscription, Arbeit macht frei, which means labor makes you free at the entrance of the camp. Because the food rations were so planned that usually a prisoner should die after six weeks of hard labor, because they were getting less than 600 kilocalories a day. So he realized that the hard work, the hard labor, which causes your death, is this what frees you from this uh, brutal repression and unhuman treatment by the Germans. But despite that, thanks to the good that was inside of him, he was able to encourage other prisoners and soon they started the secret underground operation in Auschwitz. In Polish it was called Związek Organizacji Wojskowej, ZOV. And soon, in October, in October 1940, he was able to pass outside the camp his first report. One of the eight or nine, depends on the uh, historian sources, that he uh, sent the free world from this hell on earth, from this brutal Auschwitz, where he spent almost 1,000 days, two years and seven months. In this time, thanks to him, the free world could hear three important information. First, about the brutal brutality of the concentration camps. Second, about the first use of gas chambers on Soviet prisoners in 1941. And third, about the Entlösung. So the brutal plan of the Germans to annihilate the Jewish population of Europe. With the mass murdering in gas chambers, which started on the spring of 1942. Unfortunately, despite his requests to the Allies, which was contained in those reports, to bomb Auschwitz, it never happened. The Allies, especially the British, had other priorities. The news of the cruelty of Auschwitz first reached the British in January of 1941. At that time, the Polish government in exile in London asked the Royal Air Forces for a bombardment of the camp by British bombers, which was denied by mid of January because of the technical difficulties. The second report, which Pilecki and his people have delivered orally via prisoners who left the camp in uh, autumn of 1941, reached UK in the uh, January of 1942, thanks to a Swedish businessman Sven Norman, who was cooperating with the Polish underground. This caused only the British to organize a press conference about German war crimes and officially announced that those crimes are gonna be prosecuted after the war. But the third report, who had a detailed description of the Holocaust, of the mass murder happening in Auschwitz, reached finally UK in February of 1943, together with the secret agent Napoleon Segieda. Unfortunately, another request of bombardment of the Auschwitz camp was denied. The reason for the denial by the Royal Air Force and the Air Force of the US were other priorities and a planned invasion of Sicily. So as you've, as you've heard, there was enough information understand the cruelty of Auschwitz and I think it's very important to understand that January, let's say February 1943, the Allies, the British, the US, they know what's really happening in Auschwitz. At that point, 
in the gas chambers died a little, little more than 200,000 Jews from all over the Europe. As we know from many sources, altogether the number of victims will be above 1 million. People from Jewish descent coming from all over Europe who will be killed by Germans in the gas chambers of Auschwitz. We don't know if a decision to bomb Auschwitz will end this cruelty. Probably not. But maybe it would save some lives. But instead, the Western Allied forces, the British and the US Americans leadership decided to do nothing. And also in spring 1943, uh, the Germans changed their uh, plans towards Auschwitz. So they decided to take all the Poles, all the Polish people still being prisoners in the camp, and send them to Western Germany, to places like concentration camp in Buchenwald. Mm, the main reason was probably that uh, there were too many witnesses of uh, the Holocaust. And they wanted that only Jews stay in Auschwitz. And soon uh, 7,000 Polish prisoners left the camp, with them including most of uh, Witold Pilecki's underground movement. He decided to stay in the camp, not because he wanted to, um, uh, he was so afraid of losing his life or something like that. He still had the hope that despite the lack of effort and initiative of the Western Allies, Maybe the Polish underground, the whole army, could do something to save some prisoners from Auschwitz. And on the night between the 26th and 27th of uh, April 1943, he flee from the camp. Together with two other prisoners, uh, they got into a commando, so like a group of prisoners that was working in a bakery outside of Auschwitz. And in the night they managed to escape. It was a big miracle on the um, escape because uh, uh, they had a key with them which they used to open a um, lock on a window. And then during their escape, because it was already close to um, early morning, they had difficulties to cross the nearby river. And they found a boat. And there was also a lock on the, on the boat, a locker, uh, a lock, sorry, a lock. And it was like a miracle. The ski they had for uh, opening the window in the bakery worked. They could unlock the boat and cross the river. And they managed to escape to uh, almost more than 100 uh, kilometers uh, in the next few days to a town called Bochnia near Krakow. After arrival at Bochnia, Witold Pliecki tried to contact the local home army leadership. And he met Tomasz Serafinski, which is, oh, was a very interesting meeting because uh, Witold Pilecki was in Auschwitz under the, exactly the same name. And it turned out this is the Polish officer whose documents have been used by Witold Pilecki in his times of underground conspiracy in Warsaw in 1940. The two men became friends. But later on, Tomasz Serafinski had to pay a high price for this friendship. In the end of 1943, he was taken by the Gestapo and brutally beaten as a possible uh, prisoner of Auschwitz. Thanks to his fortune, he was uh, released, but he suffered very bad on his health. Witold Pilecki tried to organize a help for prisoners in Auschwitz to encourage the home army to attack the camp and release prisoners. Unfortunately, the local commander answered that his force is enough to open the gates of the camp for maximum half an hour, which would allow maximum 300 prisoners to escape from the camp. Based on this criteria, the leaders of the home army denied the action of liberation of Auschwitz. After the home army leadership decided there is nothing they could do for the prisoners of Auschwitz, uh, Witold Pilecki was uh, still in Warsaw, uh, working for the underground home army, uh, when he was pro proposed to join an organization called NIE, 
which means in Polish, no. It was like a, a conspiracy, uh, in a conspiracy, uh, in a way that uh, the Home Army leadership was foreseeing that soon the Soviets gonna take Poland. Now it's spring 1944, uh, it's after Stalingrad, the uh, Soviet forces are approaching Poland and uh, they are maybe the allies of our allies, so if, uh, but they don't acknowledge the Polish government in London. They also don't acknowledge the Polish Home Army. And they have the Soviets, especially Joseph Stalin, has their own idea for Poland. The country is supposed to be a Soviet protectorate and they are preparing Polish communists to take over the rule in Poland. And the secret organization is prepared to be an underground movement under the Soviet occupation. But then these plans are disturbed by the outbreak of the Warsaw Uprising on the 1st of August 1944 in which Witold Pilewski will play also an important role. underground forces in Warsaw, Pilecki was taken captive by the Germans and through some offlats he uh, finally landed with other uh, soldiers from, uh, from his unit in the prisoners of war camp in Murnau, this is in uh, Bavaria in Germany. And there he was liberated by uh, US forces in the end of April 1945. Soon after, in a couple of months, he joined the Polish forces in Italy, the so-called Second Polish Corps of General Anders, uh, which was uh, composed of Polish soldiers who escaped mostly from the Soviet Union in the spring of 1942, at the moment where there was still a relationship between the Polish government uh, in exile in London and the Soviet Union. That was uh, uh, broken after um, the world uh, reached the news of the Katyn massacre, of the brutal massacre of more than 15,000 Polish officers by the Soviets in the spring of 1940, which was envied by the Germans who found them buried in mass graves uh, in the area of Katyn, in today's uh, Ukraine and uh, Russia. In Italy, Wilpilecki wrote we can say one of his final versions of his uh, full report from Auschwitz. 
He did it with the help of uh, Maria Szlongowska, and also uh, in that time he was promoted to the cavalry captain, which is in Polish called, uh, with a very interesting word, uh, Rotmistrz. In the autumn of 1945, General Anders and his uh, officers of intelligence proposed Witold Pilecki to go back to Poland on a secret mission. On a secret, secret mission to gather information about the communist regime, about the Soviet occupation of Poland and what is happening in a country that was uh, betrayed by the Western Allies. Who at the Yalta Conference in February 1945 agreed to uh, the idea of Stalin to create a new democratic government in Poland, which turned out to be a communist regime soon after. And Witold Pilecki accept accepted this mission and in December of 1945, he reached Warsaw. On the return to Poland, Pilecki gathered a group of former Polish soldiers and prisoners of Auschwitz in order to gather the information about communist and Soviet crimes in occupied Poland. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to reconcile with his wife and children because of his underground operation he couldn't live with them in peace. What is also important to understand, because eastern parts of Poland have been seized by the Soviets, he couldn't also return to his beautiful home in Sukurce, which was then becoming part of the Soviet Republic of Belarus. And Polish people couldn't return there. The mission that uh, Pilecki was maintaining in Poland most mostly for the gathering of information. And for example, in June 1946, he passed over to the West a crucial information about the fraud, about the government fraud at the constitutional referendum in Poland. A referendum that allowed the uh, Communist Party to take, to take over the country in the following year. In the summer of 1946, he also get, got an order from uh, the Polish forces in the West that he should leave Poland and to return to the Western Europe. Because they got information that the communist secret police, the so-called UB, is after him. Witold Pilecki asked his wife on one of the rare meetings, usually they were meeting like once a month or Mm, twice a month for a couple of hours, if she would join him together with children on uh, their escape uh, from Poland. And she said no. And that's why he decided to stay in Poland. He also couldn't find someone who would sacrifice his life for uh, such a duty like he was doing. And uh, what's also crucial, he didn't only get information. He did everything to help the soldiers still fighting in the woods, in the countryside, against the communist regime. Uh, he was sending them food, money. Um, we know also from some facts that he did buy out people from the uh, communist prisons. But his uh, mission would end, sadly, in the spring of 1947, where finally the communist secret police would arrest him and all his uh, colleagues, all his uh, co-workers and uh, the secret group, including Maria Szlongowska, who uh, was traveling with him from Italy. And um, the communists will torture him in a cruel investigation that will last for more than six months. In the six months of the brutal investigation, Pilecki will be faced with more than 150 brutal interrogations, including beating and brutal tortures, performed by a sadist called Himchuk, one of the most brutal communist criminals in the times of the Stalinism. What is important, Pilecki won't, be won't betray anyone, 
and he will also not confess to any crimes. He will stay a honorable person as he was all his life. The trial of Witold Bilecki and his group would start in the beginning of March 1948. Before the trial, many former Auschwitz prisoners sent letters to the Polish communist officials asking for a pardon, for a mercy for uh, Witold Bilecki. But they were all denied. Also the current communist prime minister of Poland, Józef Cyrankiewicz, also a prisoner of Auschwitz, was asked to vouch for uh, Witold Pilecki. But instead he wrote a letter to the judges in which stood Judge Witold Pilecki not on his deeds at Auschwitz, but at the fact that he is a solemn enemy of the People's Republic of Poland, which was the official name of the communist regime. And he was found guilty and sentenced to death. The reason for the sentence was that he was charged with betrayal of the country and of cooperation with the Germans and foreign intelligence services, including the uh, British and on the 25th of May 1948 he was killed by the communists in the prison of Rakowiecka in Warsaw with a shot at the back of the head by an infamous mur murderer Piotr Śmietański who did kill many Polish heroes and partisans from the Second World War did everything that the memory of Witold Pilecki should fade with time. In communist Poland, you couldn't write a single sentence about him. The censorship was so strong that no book was mentioning Pilecki until 1989. In 1990, the Polish authorities declared him unguilty. And in 2006, he was really fully honored with an order of the White Eagle by the Polish president Lech Kaczyński. And today he is a universal hero. A hero that he did sacrifice himself for the good of humanity, for the good of the society. A really invincible character. With the power of will that uh, is really hard to find in. Uh, this world. And in the last message that uh, Pilecki has given to his uh, family, he asked his children to be good people, to honor the tradition, to honor the country they are raised in, and to live with an open heart. And this is also a message with, uh, that starts his main report written after the war, that very often we live our hearts, our lives with a closed heart, with, uh, without opening ourselves for other people and living our life for other people. And Vito Pilecki really did open his heart for uh, the others. And this is like, I think, his biggest monument. And even now, as we don't have, well, technically we don't know where he was really buried, Polish authorities still look to find his corpse, to uh, find his place of burial. So we uh, cannot honor him uh, at one place. And I think uh, our deeds should be uh, this what honors uh, the memory of Witold Pilecki. And I would like you to encourage to uh, get more information about Witold Pilecki. The reason I would, that was also, uh, also of uh, 
mm, inspired me to record this video was a mm, bestseller called uh, Book of the Year in the UK in 2019. And it's the book written by Jack uh, Fairweather called The Volunteer. So I have read the book of uh, Jack Fairweather. I also listened to the English uh, audiobook that's uh, available uh, for sale online. And it's a great book about Witold Pilecki. And I hope it uh, will allow millions of people to uh, get to know about this legend and uh, his deeds. But it's not necessarily a great book about Polish history uh, in the World War II, and especially the Polish-Jewish relations. So the relations between uh, Polish people and the uh, Jews that were uh, inhabitants and citizens of Poland before World War II. And uh, what I found in this book are a couple of uh, already debunked myths from the uh, Polish-Jewish uh, um, relationship that are sometimes being called as uh, Polish uh, anti-Semitism. And uh, you must know that uh, Poland was a country with the biggest worldwide Jewish population before the war. And of course, uh, a country in which the most of those people were killed by Germans. But there, um, I will give a couple of facts that were mentioned in the book that might not necessarily be true. Uh, first one is the I would say, ignorant stance of the leaders of the whole army against anti-Jewish propaganda, the Polish underground, uh, which uh, was proven by many authors untrue and usually was a German uh, provocation. The second is the uh, false accusation of uh, Wacław Stykowski, one of the uh, officers and uh, leading a unit in the Warsaw Uprising in 1944, uh, which uh, maybe not directly, but was somehow accused in this book of uh, killing a group of Jews. And this is a myth already debunked by a lot of uh, Polish uh, historians. And I think uh, there are also a couple of uh, others, but in my humble opinion, Mm, this is not something that maybe Jack Fairwater uh, mm, did wrong. Um, also, uh, well, I think he might also not be aware of uh, uh, some of those information. But the uh, general outcome is that uh, I, reading the book, I have a feeling that sometimes Jack Fairwater draws a line between Western Europe anti-Semitism, especially in Nazi Germany, but also in the UK or France, it was coming out of the idea of uh, so-called social Darwinism. That Jews are like uh, worse than other people. Yes, that were opinions which were very popular in the 30s in Western Europe. While in Poland, the tensions between uh, the Polish people and the Jews, so like all were citizens of Poland, were coming because of an economical struggle. Poland was hit very hard by the world crisis of the 1930s. And especially in the Polish countryside, there was an uh, economical rivalry between, uh, for example, Polish and Jewish merchandisers, between Polish uh, and uh, Jewish factors. And these tensions could cause sometimes hatred. Sometimes they could cause like uh, small riots. But, uh, I've heard of a riot in the 1930s where a policeman was killed, but uh, Jewish Polish uh, riots, but none of the uh, Jews. There were, there were no pogroms like in uh, Nazi Germany. Uh, and I think uh, because of this uh, cultural differences and this background, uh, Jack Fairwater might sometimes uh, draw a line and see anti-Semitism where there was only social struggle. Simply social struggle between poor people, which uh, happens all over the world. But despite this, uh, it's a great book and I hope that uh, uh, many of you will uh, read it.
Um, I'm also recommending some uh, Polish sources on uh, Witold Bilecki. There are more and more that are being translated into uh, English. And this is it. Thank you for uh, today. And I hope uh, you will uh, like the story and uh, if you find it interesting, please uh, subscribe to the channel, uh, give a thumbs up for the video. And I hope to see you on next historical stories from the Polish history. Bye! Cała twe w mogiłach, ale swa dusze Jezus w niebie To dla ciebie mistrz mój rod, mistrz wspaniały Tak sam jak ty, kiedyś walczym o zmiany Myślę dziś ten list, mam nadzieję, że czytasz to Nie idziemy prosto, idę tak jak ty pod prąd Piszę to szacunku i nie jest to porównanie Siedzisz tam gdzieś w murach i czytasz mnie każde zdanie